today we're going to be going over the top five best open field commander pairs here in rise of kingdoms in 2023 what's going on guys cheers now the last time that i did a best open field pairs video was january of 2022 we've seen so much change in rise of kingdoms since then that we are more than overdue for an update on what some of the best commander pairs are for the open field and what better time to make this video than after the registration of my kingdom in the king of the nile kvk matchmaking starts in just under five days so that should be exciting but let's just jump right into the list okay and the first commander pair that i want to talk about that is arguably right now the best open field commander pair in the game is nevsky primary with joan of arc secondary and it's really embarrassing that i have to scroll all the way down here to get her because that means that i have not expertised her that will likely change in the very near future i've still been using william with my nevsky but nevsky with joan seems to be the way to go right now this commander pairing is bringing pretty much everything that you would want to the open fields okay nevsky of course has an insane amount of just raw stats so you have attack defense and health in multiple different skills here which is incredible but you also have a really punishing troop defense debuff which is huge and a single target damage factor that is really really high on top of that he deals more damage to and takes less damage from surrounded targets and of course has bonus skill damage here on the fourth skill and if we take a look at joan she is just an absolute skill damage machine really powerful three target aoe here on the active skill which is basically the only thing that nevsky is missing is massive aoe and joan is bringing it double time because of her fourth skill here this is a 100 probability of popping that active skill a second time and this will go off pretty much every other skill cycle because there is quite a long cooldown and that long cooldown should tell you just how powerful this actually is and while nevsky is dealing damage and debuffing the target joan is dealing aoe and buffing nearby allies including your own army five percent damage bonus 20 rage per second and if you go through her kit she also has a little bit of extra stats here we have bonus attack we have bonus health we also have some march speed normal attack damage and counter attack damage also on the expertise as well so as if nevsky needed more stats well great news joan of arc is going to give it to him anyway and this is really just a match made in heaven now some players like to do joan of arc prime primary uh, i would say for kvk purposes most players are doing nevsky primary right now and i do think that that is the way to go i think that if players see the joan primary they're, they may be more inclined to hit it nevsky on his own could imply a lot of things behind him but if you see the joan of arc you know for sure it's almost guaranteed to be nevsky so yeah i would say nevsky primary is probably the way to go here with that being said let me bring up another march here that i think is almost on the same caliber and depending on who you talk to you may be able to argue that it is and that is of course guan yu primary with cpo prime secondary this is still the premier tried and true best inventory march in all of rise of kingdoms even after the release of sargon and Tarek, of course and we are going to talk about those commanders later in the video so make sure you stay tuned for that if you are curious but guan cpo is a match made in heaven of course guan yu has his classic three second slide silence with a massive three target aoe which is super super powerful and on his fourth skill he's dealing a nice chunk of additional damage to the target that he is hitting here as well and beyond that he's just got march speed and a ton of attack that's pretty much all that he's good for and the good thing about guan yu is you could do a 5155 guan yu if you're lucky and save a ton of sculptures obviously this expertise is nice but it's so many sculptures for a very small benefit and yes there are many ways to gain shields right now in the open field so it is nice to get that 15 percent skill damage but realistically uh most players do not need this expertise it's nice it's good i got it uh most players do not need this so this sort of is technically cheaper than the nevsky joan of arc prime build if again you can get lucky here or if you have a lot of skill resets and of course cpo is doing everything that guan isn't doing okay so we have a ton of infantry attack and march speed here as well which stacks on top of what Guan is doing, of course. But then you have the infantry health here, which is essentially one of the most important things that CPO is giving to Guan Yu. On top of that, we're also gaining a second AoE with a really powerful health debuff here. And again, two commanders, both with 2000 damage factor. I mean, it's just a double AoE machine and the debuffs that you're applying to that target are just absolutely insane. On top of that, you have a little bit more tankiness as well with this shielding factor that you get here. And you have a 50% chance of reducing skill damage that you take by 30%, which is huge right now. Of course, for the past like two or three years, 
aoe skill damage has been the meta in the open field that's just it is what it is so you're going to be getting bombarded with a ton of aoe in the open fields and the fact that you have that chance a very good one to reduce that is pretty nice even if there is an eight second cooldown the icing on the cake is the little bit of damage over time that you get here on the third skill and 10 bonus skill damage which is solid and the synergy with the silence here is huge so when you're hitting that silence target that you will guarantee silence with guan yu's active skill your rage is going to grow 30 percent faster which means faster rage cycles which means more three target aoe 2000 damage factor skill shots from both of these commanders this is an absolute slam dunk one of the best no question one of the best open field marches in the game and the best part about this pair is that this is all infantry so while it may be a little bit slower than some of the other pairs we're going to talk about it is a little bit more tanky than those other pairs as well so if people do choose to focus down your guan yu with the assumption that cbo is behind him great news the rest of your marches are not going to have that aggro and they're going to be dealing massive damage next let's move on to pair number three and that's going to be Boudica prime with e song Ye secondary now this is one that i think is a little bit more subjective than the previous two i think nobody would really argue that these two like this is just the way that you run those commanders right this pair is I would say 80 or 90 percent of players would agree that this is the pair that you go with however you could also say Artem Egypt belongs here instead of YSG depending on the other pairs that we're going to talk about in the video and of course we will talk about Artem Egypt later down the line as well so stay tuned for that now before we talk about Boudica and YSG if you're finding the video useful so far consider dropping a thumbs up on it it's free it takes one second and it helps the channel a ton and Boudica thanks you very much okay and you don't want to disappoint Boudica she's gorgeous okay Boudica YSG obviously the active skill here on Boudica huge damage factor the same damage factor as we saw on Nevsky but I would argue that her debuff is even more important than Nevsky's active skill because they take 35 percent increased skill damage from all sources so if you're swarming down a target they now take more skill damage from all of your armies and all of your allied armies it's insane but also their march speed is reduced by 30 percent for three seconds that is a snare that is a crowd control that's slowing them down so you the probability that you stay connected to that target and continue to do damage to that target is very very high because of that slowdown which means Boudica is just one of the best open field commanders in the game right now I wish she had AoE but that's where YSG comes in obviously YSG is a, a vanilla AoE glass cannon that's what he is if you've been playing the game for any amount of time you know what YSG is doing okay his expertise five target circular AoE 1700 damage factor with the 50 percent skill damage bonus and a rage engine plus the archer attack bonus here as well is great for Boudica and then if you look at what she's doing she's essentially adding more to the kit she's bringing the stats that YSG desperately needs a little bit of March speed 30 percent of attack 30 percent of defense under 80 percent you take 25 percent less skill damage which again just like we talked about with CPO Prime is huge except this is guaranteed all the time which is very very good she also has a little bit of a healing factor more damage to infantry and we can't forget that Yi Ye did just get an upgrade to his relic which means he's now bringing you 20 percent more archer defense and five percent extra skill damage which is just absolutely crucial the defense here is huge okay one of the biggest problems with this march is that it does at times feel very squishy which is why some people opt for that Artemisia instead of the damage from YSG not that Artemisia isn't dealing a ton of damage she absolutely is but the 50 percent bonus skill damage on YSG is huge but this definitely is nice it's a nice little bump up to this March that I think it really sort of kind of needed so we love to see that now in my opinion these three armies are like a no-brainer pretty much anybody in the entire game like you probably should be running these three armies in the open field like that's just that's kind of where my brain is at right now that's just like if you're not running these three marches you're you're not doing the best thing and like there's it's there's so few people that would argue with this like it's just the meta right now but with that being said let's move on to the next pair that I want to talk about and that is Zhang Yu with William okay this is this this pair has stood the test of time and honestly it has shocked me personally for how long Zhang Yu has stayed relevant. I completely skipped over Zhang Yu when he came out and I do sort of regret it. Okay. The reason that I skipped Zhang Yu is because he's a glass cannon. Okay. He's super fast in the open field. 
his rage cycle is the fastest in the game or at least you could say it's tied for fastest certainly the most effective fast rage cycle Genghis Khan is not even close he has a really powerful defense uh reduction right here 30 percent for every target that you hit so this is a three target aoe three target debuff which is huge you're getting 40 percent of attack here and a ton of bonus march speed which is insane for a commander that is already super super fast you also gain stacks of cavalry damage over time here so the more that he's ignored the more damage he's going to deal but unfortunately at this point a lot of players know that Zhang Yu is like one of the most prime targets to hit in the open field he's one of the first commanders that you should be melting and he will melt pretty fast and then of course his expertise bonus skill damage and when you have a rage buff for more than one turn skill damage increases by 10 percent for three seconds so that's an additional 10 percent, which is huge now William of course also does not need a, an entrance here okay he has a relatively weaker aoe here but keep in mind that it's only 200 damage factor weaker than we saw on zhang yu and the fact of the matter is that with the rage cycle here you're going to be popping this off an insane amount of times you're also getting that slowdown the same level of slowdown that you would get from Boudica, except this is an aoe slowdown so absolutely huge very good to have in the open field and the targets that you're attacking don't gain their extra skill damage buffs so that's kind of big and a lot of people maybe gloss over that but that is really nice you're gaining even more cavalry attack and march speed as if zhang yu didn't have a ton of that already and when you're outside territory your Zhang Yu's gaining that 10 percent increased damage as well which is huge most players do not have to expertise their William okay five 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 one is more than good enough for most players and if you do have that configuration you're going to have an additional 20 percent of attack that's 20 percent more and a 10 percent chance of instant proc damage of 800 which is nice and if you're surrounding a target which you probably are it's going to take extra damage as well of course that third skill only gets better if you do decide to expertise with additional damage and 10 percent more attack and finally this last skill here says that if your active skill only hits one target you gain 20 percent increased defense for three seconds but if you hit two or more targets you and nearby allies gain that 20 percent extra defense and 50 rage per second for three seconds and that is one of the biggest parts about William is that you do not need to add points into this skill to gain the full benefit of the 50 rage per second for three seconds so for those of you with 5551 five, five, this is going to be a 10 percent defense bonus but realistically I mean either way this skill is exceptionally good okay so not only are you gaining a rage engine from Zhang Yu but you're providing more rage rage to yourself and your nearby allies with your William again I think that this March is just so good for the open field it is incredible the only downside to this is that Zhang Yu has been around for a while and pretty much everybody knows that he is one of the first targets if not the first target that you should be hitting in a massive murder ball because of, for one if you leave him alone he's going to deal massive damage and the, the amount of debuffs and buffing that this combination is going to do is just super detrimental to everything going on and two people like to hit him because he's squishy right there's a lot of cab attack here there's March speed to get away but there's really not that much defensive capability virtually there's none actually except for the little bit of defense you get from your uh, William so ultimately this will get melted really fast which is why I put this as pair number four but again this is one of those marches that like people aren't really going to argue with you like if you say you're bringing Zhang Yu William to the open field they're like yeah of course great I'm glad to hear that that's incredible I wonder and this is going to be controversial okay I wonder how much longer Zhang Yu is going to stay as one as the open field meta right as part of the open field meta right because he is very glass cannon and 1700 AoE you know we're seeing a lot of 2000 AoEs right now in the open fields right we see all that with the two prime commanders here I think all it would take is you know another cav commander coming out with a slightly higher aoe similar rage cycle and that would be it for Zhang Yu. but right now this is absolutely one of the pairs that you should be using now let's talk about the fifth pair okay because as you've noticed there's two cav one infantry one archers now if you talk to the highest caliber players in the game if you talk to the top the tippy top we're talking about the mega whales the krakens we're talking about the the kingdom 1960s of the game okay if we're talking to those players the tippy top the pinnacle of rise of kingdoms okay then a lot of players are going to throw in a trajan with ethel flood and some players may not agree that this army is on the same caliber as the other four which is why i put it fifth okay and if you don't like this army composition I'm going to be giving you alternatives that do not include this support March because that is exactly what this is the other marches here 
are if you notice all of these marches have aoe two of them are double aoe okay so these are all mega high damage outputs just raw dps with buffs and debuff this is strictly support which is why i think a lot of players question this but again if you look at the top the tippy top a lot of players are using this um some players are using mulan instead of ethel fled i prefer the ethel fled here especially because a lot of players uh, have ethel fled expertise right but let's just look at this support march for a moment okay and i know you guys are already saying but omniarch what about the equipment okay what about building a legendary set and a legendary leadership set is questionable i will address that in a moment so just bear with me but let's first take a look at what trajan is doing okay 300 single target damage the, almost negligible okay almost negligible what he's doing here again is a support march next army okay when this active skill goes off you and nearby allies deal 25 percent increased skill damage for three seconds and you gain 40 rage per second this gets even better when you expertise trajan which if you're gonna go with this combo i think you have to if you're going to use trajan ethel fled you're, there's no five five one one trajans okay really you want to go expertise these days it bumps the damage factor up to 450 rage per second for three seconds the downside you take 25 percent increased damage so this is you know one of the things here is that if you are a free-to-play player you may be taking more damage from this which fills your hospital a little bit faster i will say though that a lot of players tend to leave trajan alone and if you're not you probably should and i know you're thinking omniarch if, it, if it's a support march why not take out the support march right because think of it like this okay the argument for not targeting the trajan first is that you have commanders like zhang yu that are hitting you dealing mega damage and you could wipe him out very easily whereas Trajan will stack his defense to the moon and be mega tanky and even if you take him out you're taking out a 400 damage factor with an ethel flood behind him like I get that he's a support Marge but while you're trying to melt down that Trajan the Zhang Yu is destroying you their Guan Yu is silencing you like you're taking so much damage from the other marches that it's usually better to leave the Trajan for the last okay that's a topic for a, another video so the reason that i brought that up is because yes if you're a free to play, free -to -play player with trajan you will take 25 percent increased damage with this active skill which can be scary i would argue that this march may not be targeted as often as you might think so keep that in mind second skill here 20 percent defense really nice 20 percent health outside of alliance territory these are the best defense stats this is the best tanky stats that you could want on a supportive march you're bringing 10 percent more troops to the battlefield which is again really good for any march but especially for support here so you stay alive a little bit longer 300 more damage factor from that active skill if you have mixed troops which you will be with ethel flood and you cause the target to take 20 percent increased damage for three seconds that's huge that's a very supportive debuff and of course we talked about the fourth skill just stacks up a ton of defense here this is huge 60 percent defense if it's a longer fight i mean this is this is just super tanky and the reason that ethel flood is behind him is because she brings five target aoe which is nice and she brings one of the most debilitating debuffs in the game i'll bet it's only for two seconds but it's a 90 percent stat reduction that's wild she also takes 20 percent less counterattack damage and she slows down the targets in a pretty meaningful way especially with that cavalry march speed reduction it's 50 percent that's huge unfortunately you know is your trajan ethel flood gonna snare target like you're not really gonna you're gonna have a hard time catching up to them right so that, that it is what it is but beyond that you also gain 20 percent bonus attack because you're gonna have three or, uh, or more different troop types and if you do slow the target you'll deal more damage but realistically this march is again mega supportive it is only to be supportive that's all it's doing which means a your other four mega powerful marches that we talk about in this video are going to be dealing more damage more skill damage they're going to be getting more rage the target's going to be debuff from ethel flood it's like putting your other four marches on steroids that that's kind of what this is doing but not only that you're going to be buffing all of your allies as well and if they're bringing trajans with ethel floods to the field it's it's just it compounds the effect over time and I honestly am also shocked at how long Trajan has be, uh, remained relevant. Now let's talk about the gear because I know you're thinking like Omniarch, you know, this is all great, but uh, free to play players, low spenders, like they're not going to be able to build a full talented leadership set. And I hear you. And that's why we're going to talk about other marches in just a second. But I also want to pose the question. Okay. If you stack a ton of stats on your Trajan Ethel flood, what does that really get you? like really think about that for a second right because if we talk about a a commander like Guan Yu okay more stats here is 
a going to keep him alive longer that's why you have tanky stats but also the bonus attack here is gonna have him deal more damage and he's already dealing a ton of damage right and that's it's it kind of multiplies there if you look at a commander like trajan with Ethelfled having a ton of extra stats here like Trajan's already pretty tanky he already gives you a lot of those tanky stats yes it's good to have more of them but realistically you don't really care about the damage output of this March so like you don't really need the best of the best equipment on this March for it to be really effective in the open fields and beyond that your Ethelfled's free like you get her expertise for free so this is more of a free to play friendly army than you actually might think because again you know comparing all purple equipment to all golden equipment here we're talking about maybe 10 percent of stats or more and now that we have the armaments in the game that that gap is going to be even lower if you actually can have some decent armaments on here and that's not even talk about the fact that the echelon formation completely makes the buffs here from Trajan even more powerful it's actually insane so I hope that answers the equipment question I hope I was very clear with that you don't really need the best equipment here because you're not really trying to deal damage in other words an all golden set here is not going to make his supportive nature better it's not like he's going to give you more rage or more skill damage or anything like that the, the, the only thing that you're doing here is buffing and debuffing and that is not related to his equipment at all but let's say you don't buy it let's say that you're not interested in trajan you're 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 not going to bring an ethel flood to the battlefield you're not interested in that at all okay there's a couple of different uh, paths you could take here all right you could either do three cavalry with one of the other troop types or you could do two cav two infantry one archer and the final path is you could do two cav two infantry one archer and the path that you take is up to you i will say that the three cavalry path is my least favorite i i don't think that that is the best route to go if you're a cavalry main great if you have you know a zenith of power skin and you're a whale and you have all the best cav stuff that's fine that's that's totally good i don't know if i love three armies of the same troop type anymore and i'm struggling with that myself on my own account because a while ago i started building three infantry sets of gear and so i'm really trying to figure out what direction i'm going to take but i don't think that if you're building the best possible murder ball i don't really think that three infantry is the way to go just as in the same way that i don't think that three cab is the way to go and i don't think that three archers is the way to go with that being said let's talk about the route where you go with two cav two infantry one archer okay because i i like this probably more than the double archer although i think that there's well that that really depends Let, let's talk about this okay so let's move your archer down to the bottom because this is going to be your final pair here uh if you're bringing two infantry marches you're definitely going to split these two up there's pretty much no world where you wouldn't do that it just makes the most sense the only thing i think you could consider would be like this with herald maybe right but I don't really think that that's part of the equation. Okay. So most likely you're going to be splitting these two commanders up, which prior to Sargon and Tark coming into the game, that was a really risky play. But now that we have Tark and Sargon, there's a couple of things that you can do. My favorite way to do this that I think is maybe the most consistent, but isn't the best option is going to be something like this. Okay. Because when you do it this way, Juan Sargon has a really nice synergy. The single target damage output on Sargon is insane. He's also giving you the infantry health that Guan was getting from CPO. Now he's just getting it from Sargon, which is nice. You're gaining a little bit more of infantry attack here as well. Some March speed, which is nice bonus damage, a little bit of defense, a little bit of shielding here. Obviously the odd debuff is one of the biggest things with Sargon. He's supportive, which is really, really nice. And that odd debuff is spread or inflicted by the AOE on Guan Yu. So you can effectively make three targets, take that debuff instead of just the one. If you had paired Sargon with a single target damage commander, like if you do a Sargon with Alex or a Sargon with Tarek, yes, those are good pairs, but you're really only debuffing a single army. Whereas if you have Sargon with an AOE commander, you can debuff multiple. That's why I like to pair these two together. Keep in mind, if your Guan Yu is expertise, he gains bonus skill damage when he gets a shield. And again, Sargon is giving you a shield. There's just, there's so much synergy here that makes this commander pair really, really solid. And then again, you now have your Scipio who is freed up to pair with 
a single target damage nuke like Tarek, right? We already talked about how CPO has AOE massive health debuff. He gives you a shield and a ton of other things. Tarek is hitting a single unit like a truck and giving CPO a ton of infantry attack, a little bit of March speed outside of territory. I do wish that, that was more. You're going to be dealing more damage to cavalry, 10% more damage. And we already talked about in this video how cavalry is pretty much the open field meta right now okay pretty much everyone everyone who's a top tier player is running at least two cavalry in the open field and that's not necessarily true for the other two types so the fact that you're guaranteed going to be dealing more damage to those is really nice here you also gain 15 percent increased damage and a rage reduction which is a really good debuff here so again we're kind of filling the gaps Tarek has the defense tree so he benefits from the rage engine on the support tree from CPO. so you're going to be popping off those uh single target nukes even faster i really like the synergy here which is nice if you don't like the Tarek argument then of course you could do something like honda or mehmed of course i know a lot of players love these uh, aoe options here okay so if you don't like Tarek for open field fighting go with one of these the other route that you could take for two infantry would look something like this where you actually remove tar completely and you either do the classic guan alex combination and then you would do the sargon cpo combination which gives cpo the skill tree that he normally gets from guan here he would be getting it from sargon and of course sargon continues to spread that odd debuff aoe with the aoe on cpo you're also hiding your cpo behind sargon uh, this is a really really solid pair here um also a lot of players are doing the cpo trajan or, or trajan cpo depending on how you want to run it but this is surprisingly good as well because you now have a really tanky cpo who's still dealing a massive amount of damage but now he's also even more supportive with the trajan so that's kind of where we're at with this one i think this build you know you're doing a little bit of a, a higher risk here with the guan alex if they do target the guan it's going to melt really quickly which is unfortunate so i'm leaning more towards going the option with the cpo tark but this is absolutely some uh things you can consider okay now let's say you want to go with the two cav two archer then in this case you would of course split up the Boudica YSG and this is where we talk about Artemisia coming in here and then we have the Nebu YSG now this is I would say the way to go if you're going to do two archer marches as well uh, obviously you have the AoE still here on the Artemisia secondary plus you're giving a ton of the hanky stats that Boudica Prime really needs of course she's getting the 20 percent defense from YSG but now she would be getting the same defense plus health which is just insane Artemisia also self silences which is normally a bummer in exchange for a nice damage increase but uh Boudica's expertise here does have a 80 percent chance to remove that silence and continue giving you that uh, bonus effect here which is nice of course if you have the expertise here on artemisia then you have a 10 percent chance to deal additional damage factor the target deals more skill damage here which i i don't really know why they did that but yeah overall Boudica with artemisia is just it's even more tanky and still deals a ton of aoe and bonus damage it's it's really good and then of course that brings you with your nebu who would now be paired with your ysg and i think that this is uh, you know this is before Boudica prime came into the game this was like the archer march to use and it's still really good the downside with this march is that it is pretty squishy you do now have again the relic on ysg that means this has 50 percent total archer defense which is nice you're missing some health which you can pick up on some of the equipment pieces but you're getting a double five target aoe these both deal five target aoe which is very rare most commanders in the game deal three target aoe this is a double five target which is insane obviously you have the 15 percent damage bonus on nebu as well and you have a really powerful rage reduction to the target that nebu is hitting but really other than that that's kind of all that nebu does he's just a, a little bit of a, a tanky aoe machine here okay uh and despite having the 50 percent archer defense i still think that this march is pretty squishy and there's not that much attack here but really you're going to just be dealing so much skill damage that it doesn't really matter but that is how I would run things if I wanted to do the two cav two archer one infantry and of course with all of those combinations that I mentioned if you decide to branch out to a sixth pair then you we would just throw in that Trajan Ethel fighter right so if you are doing something like this then your sixth pair if you're buying crystal tech right you could go ahead and slap this in there and you could be good or you could do two cav two archer two infantry and have like the best of everything and that would be insane and then your seventh March if you continue going that route would be something like this 
so a full seven army builds would probably look something like this obviously you can sub in the alex or the honda for these pairings here or you could do something like this and you would be pretty good to go anyway guys this video was much longer than i thought it would be so if you enjoyed or if you learned something or found it useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton while you're down there consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kings video let me know in the comment section below what your favorite five open field armies are i would love to hear from you and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i'll talk to you guys again soon peace